Was that an intro? Yep, I did the intro. Now I just hope it worked and it didn't mess anything up. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're what? Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Monday Night Draw, uh, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good fall. Uh, we're here with Meredith, my lovely wife and yes, co-host, who if I don't mention, she'll lose her mind. Hello. No, it's more a chance to say hi, everybody. Right. Okay. That's all I need. Yeah. Just allow me to say hello. There you go. She said hello. <laughs> uh, <coughs> sorry, the last minute we were kind of running around like maniacs, but uh, we're here. I um, I have a, a poster from uh, Tomacar, and I ran upstairs trying to find it. Meredith was on the phone. I'm looking at anyway. I don't know where it is. We have it. So uh, yeah, next week. I really want to show you guys. It's a, it's a beautiful Teenage Mutant Ninja, uh, Ninja Turtles poster. It's it's great. Hey, we have Lance DeBoy here. I haven't seen Lance for a little bit. Um, we have a super chat already, so we're going to have to scroll up in the oh. chat. And while Meredith does that, I'm just going to go ahead and get started because uh, Meredith will turn into a pumpkin at nine. So. I will, I will, I will. Mm -mm. We have a super chat. We do. Chris Maycock is here. Wanted to mention. I don't see a super chat, dude. Okay, here, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. If you can't find it, because I did see it. Hold on. I'm going, I'm going. Where is it? Come on. I'm all the way up at the top. Oh, here we go. This is from Taz Pretorius for $10. Thank you very much. I don't know. Why do you have? Oh, because uh, you were online. Okay, yes. I wasn't. Got so it. Why. Says, love the videos. Hope everything is well. Miss every stream, but then I catch them up. Uh, but I then catch up the video. This is better when you do it in the morning. Uh, would you ever draw the thing from Fantastic Four? And yeah, I think that's actually a great choice. That's like add that to the list of you know. Let me write it down. Um, add that to the list of of characters that I I think like today. I was thinking, what should I draw? I totally forgot about the Beast. Meredith actually reminded me. So we're doing the Beast. Um, You're welcome. Yes, thank you. You're the best. Oh, we have adversity here. Finally made it to the new time. Kevin Man Devil's here. Extreme Maybe's here. Are you hosting the show or drawing a picture? I'm, you know what, I'm getting my reference out. So I don't honestly need reference to draw the beast. But uh, someone actually asked, am I using the uh, screenshot as reference? And uh, as a matter of fact, I am. Because I really like the shot. I think it looks great. And so I want to do something kind of similar. This is a classic cover by Jim Lee. <clears throat> Jim Lee has a lot of eras that I really like, Meredith. Uh, he's, you know, he, like any artist, you grow over time, you change. This is actually pretty early into his X-Men run. And you can see, I mean, it's Jim Lee. But there are a lot of things that are very different from his later X-Men run. And it's always really interesting for me to see. I love this stuff. And it's inked, I want to say, I think it's inked by Scott Williams, but... Truthfully, I can't read that. It might not be. Nevins. So, Farts Mella 2009. Oh, okay. To know, <laughs> are you going to do a Halloween Monday Night Draw next week? Yes. Do you know what you're drawing? No. Your wife Meredith wants to know that. Uh, I, I have no idea. And I know we talked about it and I agreed to something and I've totally forgotten. I need like a planner, you know? Well, the stream is not forgotten. So there you go. Stream. Take it to the stream. They have all the answers. <clears throat> so yeah, and this isn't. BC says hi, Dave Meredith in chat. I hope everyone is doing well. Drake Swafford says, "Hey, Dave Meredith, good to see and hear from you. A good video as always." Thank you very much. Eric Grovart says, "Good evening. Four minutes late. Shame, Eric. Shame, shame." <sighs> I think we were we were a minute late anyway. Our horses are eating too much hay, and Meredith's trying to find more hay. Second time we've done that this season, actually. Okay. They're just going through They're it. Fatty Fattersons right now. Fortunately, That's it's all not free. Fat shaming. They're actually Fatty Fattersons. Lance DeBoyer is here. Just finished two months of night shift. Good to be back live. Yeah. Mercy Art says, What's up, bitch? Fly! Fire! Fire! <laughs> See, it's even if. Because it's, he had two fire emojis. Yeah. And by the way, I don't know if you guys notice any difference. I'm a little darker. 
And that's because my main overhead light just shut off on me and I can't get it turned back on. It's not because you got a tan? It's not because I, I mean, just the whole screen. Like if you look at it when I go away, it's a little, anyway. Yeah, it's, you know what? We have so many. You have so many problems. How do you even know. like, what kind of a professional are you? I know. It's the shame worst. Dave. And the problem is. shamed Eric and now I'm going to shame you. Shame, Dave. Shame, shame. I feel like I'm, I, you know, I'm having the time of my life. And it's it's great. Like I really am. But I at the same time. Am I am happy. I, I really want to sing this Please song, don't. The time of my life. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but great. I can't because then we'll get a copyright strike. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid people. I could be promoting your songs, people. I think if you sing a few bars from a song, actually, you're okay. Well, you told me not to sing. Uh, yeah, why am I telling you that right now? <laughs> um, Is it okay if I sing a few bars from a song? Because I'll sing. I've had the time of my life, and I owe it all to you. No, no, no! Please, you got to stop. There are people at home that just jumped away from the this this I, computer. I to okay, good. <laughs> It's actually, I think it'd be kind of nice to do. This isn't going to be, this is going to be after Jim Lee because I love this shot and I really want to do it, but it's not going to be perfect only in the sense, like it's not going to be exact just because I'm not Jim Lee and I would have to trace it. Like my, You're supposed to do Jim Lee Dave Finch style. Well, yeah. The homage. It's such a great shot though. I already know anything I change is just going to take away from it, but it is what it is. <clears throat> There's a screen, odd screen tear in the middle of the stream. Yeah. Um, guys, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I, I, here's what I'll tell you. I keep thinking, okay, this week I'm going to go through. There are a lot of things I'd really like to do to update the stream, you know, and, and make some changes around here. My camera, for instance, which really wasn't up to oh, sync, I thought. Yeah. And I actually, I got some good advice uh, last week and I, I thought, okay, I, I'm going to get to that. And I am so overwhelmed all the time. The week passes and I realize I've just been putting out other fires. Dave, I don't, I have to be honest. Yes. My screen looks fine. Well, nobody's making that up and I can kind of see it here when I do that, especially. Can you guys see that? I don't know if that's showing up live, but yeah. Anyway, um, I really need to start looking at some more professional solutions here because I'm just having trouble. That's you're not a professional now. Well, you know, professional streamer. You guys come every week, and I would kind of like it to be a uh, says proper stream. Wait, David, are you farmers? If so, that is dope. Uh, yeah. Hey. Is fix as a tractor fix and farmer? Oh yeah, well yeah, that was and th this is with his wife's assistance. Uh, yeah, yeah, because like you know what I want to say because I needed somebody else that I had to hold the wrench plus the, the wrench on the other side because otherwise you're just spinning it and it was a, a blade so I had to stop the blade with my foot all while facing up I couldn't do it myself. But also Meredith had some really good ideas and we figured out it wasn't the blade at all after it, it was so hard to get that blade off. <laughs> it wasn't the blade. It was a different thing. But we know what it is now. And he's going to go get the car tomorrow. Raymond Zar 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 Zaragoza has a super chat. Or not super chat. Just has something to say. Finally, I get to watch live. What's up, Dave? I just want to say that you're my favorite artist and have made me a much better artist in just a few months. Love the content. Much appreciated. Thank you very, very much. And Revoke says, what's going on, Finch? Lock! <clears throat> We do have a super chat now. That's why I said super chat from Truggy Dude for ten dollars. Truggy says, "Dave, when you start spotting your black, are you considering light intensity as you're spotting them, or do you have it in your head before you start drawing?" Um, I, I I'm considering light intensity in in two ways. So, okay, I've had the same backdrop for for a little bit here, but okay. So if I was to draw. Uh, just a, a tube um, and I'm lighting it from this side. I could go really dark and that light is, is very focused and just make this whole thing really, really dark. And when you apply that over a whole figure, obviously you're going to get a heavily shadowed figure. So a face, here's my head. Uh, here's my head. Uh, we're doing this quick. And if I go really shadowed, this is all going to be shadowed. This all be heavily shadowed. 
there'll be a shadow connecting then the nose i'm lighting it from this side by the way that and maybe i'll just shadow this whole side of the face even and uh some shadow under here all under the mouth i could just go with a total shadow shape there and it, it gets really really shadowed i can also light that same head uh Let's do this as fast as I can. Come on, I'm slowing down. Okay, so I'm going to light it the same way. And in this case, I'm just going to, and this is just going to be simple graphic shapes, but I'm going to light under this eye a little bit here, under the nose, just a little bit under the cheek here. And here's this eye, a little bit under the mouth. And obviously to have a shadow under the, the chin, but you can see the lighting is essentially the same, but the shadowing is much more intense on this one. And that's just a choice to uh, make the light nowhere near as strong. So that's, that's a choice. And then the other choice is uh, when I'm drawing like an arm, I've got uh, my anatomy here. So here we go. Here's my arm. Uh, anything up here is going to be fairly thin because I've got my light coming from here now. And as I go down toward, and you guys have seen me do this, as I go down toward uh, like a further away from the light, it'll get thicker and thicker and heavier as I'm rounding around the form. So those are two ways that I think about lighting. Uh, I hope that makes sense. All right. Alrighty. We have another super chat from the three eyebrows. Hey, for PLN, I don't know what that is, 50 PLNs. Hey guys, do you have something extra to copyright? Or do you do something extra to copyright and create your own character when self-publishing? And thank you on behalf of all Europe for moving the stream an hour early. <laughs> well, very welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, you know what? To copyright something properly, you probably want to use a lawyer, and I'm not a lawyer, so you know, don't take this as. See, my pose is not. Let me lift this leg a little bit. He's got it higher. Looks better. Um, and this is why I say it's not going to be Jim Lee's pose, uh, because I am not Jim Lee, as much as we'd all like to be. Uh, so you can get a lawyer, and and you can really do things really, you know, uh, correctly. But you can actually copyright something uh, just by putting a copy of your work into an envelope uh, and postmarking it and mailing it to yourself. And so it'll be sealed in the envelope with a postmark. And, you know, you probably want to like, I look, that's, old school because that's very old school. Point, but if you put it online, there's a date stamp on it. Right. But you see, you don't want to show it to people yet. Right. So how do you copyright something without making it public? And that's a way that that was like the the old school cheapo technique. And, you know, it, it would work. So it's not like that wouldn't work. But yeah, uh, but I'm don't open the envelope when you get it. Right. And I'm not a lawyer. So, you know, uh, take whatever I say with a huge grain of salt. OK. We got some old timers here. We've got Tango Model Works is here. Henry Jeremick is here. Honest Fowler is back. Yeah, it's been a while. Kayla Brussard is here. We got the old crew. Secret Avenger, Jordan Seward, Kevin Mandevil, Extreme Maybe, Tom McCarb. Everybody. Chris Burke says, what's up, gang? Hulkster says, Dave, do you have any advice on drawing two Hulk body type characters fighting? That just feels like more than can be covered. <laughs> so uh, let me, uh, I mean, we have time. Kevin Mandevil has a super chat for $9.99. How do you do, Meredith? Beast is my favorite X-Men. Glad we finally got around to him. Dave, are you using Uncanny X-Men 264 as reference? I am. I wasn't actually really planning on it. And then uh, I got that question. And I was kind of planning on doing something similar anyway, because I really like the shot. And then I thought, you know what? Why not do my version of that shot? Because I love it. And, uh, you know, I, also, I think I'll learn something from doing it. I always do when I do uh, studies of other people's work. And now this is going to be a loosely a study because 
Uh, I actually don't have it in front of me now. Like I, I had it in front of me to do the layout. Now that it's there, this is all just going to be me. And uh, to do a proper study, I, I wouldn't do that. But I also I don't want to just sit here and, and copy Jim Lee's work for a stream, partly because honestly, it would take me forever. Uh, copying, I do it uh, a decent amount. Like I, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm, you know, oh, I'm copying whatever. I think it's it's a really uh, great way to learn, but it takes me a lot longer to try and accurate, uh, or at least closely, sort of accurately copy another artist. Especially a pose like this, it's a really wild pose. This is uh, definitely not in my library of poses. And you'll find as an artist, you develop a library of poses over time, which is why it's so important to do uh, little studies. That's too far. Uh, little just tube form drawings like this of other people's work and do thousands of them because they all kind of become part of your visual library. It makes a big, big difference. And it, it's, I think... <coughs> <coughs> the number one way to get better at that. I'm already using the whiteout. You can talk over me. I'm not coughing into my yeah, You know what? It's okay. I, I'll try. Like for me here, it's probably louder than I don't know. You draw attention to my coughing when you stop. To listen to my coughing. Hey, look, lady, I'm not I'm the not one coughing into the microphone. I'm not the one coughing. That's you. We got a super chat from Adam Meyer for ten dollars. Adam says, "Beast." Thank you very much, Adam. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, Beast, this was so overdue. And uh, I think so is Thing. I, you know what? I have drawn Thing. Kind of from behind. I did a thing fighting Dr. Doom, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, not a, a proper thing from the front, like a cool shot of thing. Which reminds me. And the answer to everybody is Meredith is feeling better. I mean, I'm not 100% yet. I still have like a little bit of a like head congestion. Obviously, not the cough is better too, but I am feeling better. So take a look at this. You won't believe this, Meredith. Oh, now I see the split. That's weird. Let's yeah. Up in the picture. Yeah, I don't know why that's happening. And yeah, I. Weird. This is why I really need to go through and and really reassess my whole setup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is obviously by Arthur Adams. This sketchbook I've had for probably four years now. And uh, it's not your sketchbook. No, it's not. I was going to do a sketch in it and I could not find it. I just found it this week. So I'm thrilled. So I'm going to do my sketch this week and, you know, actually fulfill my commitment years later. So, yeah, there you go. Arthur Adams. I wish I could keep it, but I'm just glad to be able to give it back. We've gone dark. I'm reading the stream and I'm getting messages. I get I get nervous when it goes quiet, Meredith. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Alison McGlone says, does Dave need me to come by and fix his stuff? You know, I could use the, the help, Allison. Actually, I really could. We need to talk about it. If you if you can help. Oh, I know you can, but yeah, um, that would be really great. Uh, by the way, Allison has a stream that you can watch. Um, I don't know if it's possible. Maybe we can put up a link to it. Uh, I've been on Allison's uh, channel a couple of times and uh, she has such a great setup. Like it's, it's very professional and this is what I need to be doing because what I've got right now, um, like my desk, it, it actually, it shows up well. I like this camera, but it's, as you can see, giving me these tears, which it wasn't happening before. I don't know why. So frustrating. Revoke says, hey, Dave, do you think you could do one of those short tutorials like you did of Chains on how to have a character surrounded by smoke without it looking muddy or out of place? Ooh, <laughs> it's not a bad idea at all. I like that idea. Revoke I will says, say this. 
Uh, nobody really watched that. Show. I shouldn't say nobody. I know all you guys watched it, but it didn't get a huge amount of views. And I always kind of, when I'm deciding what to do for format, I always think, you know, is this going to, is this going to, you know, be good for the channel? And uh, I shouldn't be just deciding if something's good on for the channel just on views. You know, it's not great, but it's a factor. Um, I, oh, by the way, I have a, a Proco course that you guys might have heard of uh, on how to draw a, a comic page, you know. Anyway, uh, I had two pages in there. They're all done. Proco has been uh, trying to get me to finish the last page. I finally finished it. This would be two weeks ago, just before New York. I finally got it done. They were uh, incredibly patient with me until they just couldn't be. They just had to get it done. Uh, they sent you another email. Did you read it? I did. It's Yeah, it's just a little bit of follow-up stuff, so did I'll do that. Uh, no, and this is a problem. Like, yeah, I've got a few things that I haven't gotten back to. And Meredith, once again, I'm having a great time. I'm overwhelmed. I just did an interview for Marvel for their Young Guns thing. So I, I was part of their Young Guns program. I wasn't that young. I hadn't been in the business for 10 years when that happened. And that was 94, 93, I think 93. Uh, no, it had to be 94 because I got in in, or 2004. I got in in 94 anyway. Uh, so yeah, they had some questions about that. And uh, I would never have gotten around to it, but Meredith sat me down and asked me the questions and then wrote down all the answers. So that was great because I want to do this stuff. I just, I get a lot of uh, interview requests and I, I don't ever do them. Not because I'm like, you know, I don't want to do it. I just I don't have time. This is kind of a pre Joe mad beast. One, two, three, one more toe. There we go. Sean here. Sean hero has a super chat for $20. Sean says, hey, Dave, I was curious how you determine how much of the torso to show when doing poses like this or, say, a view of Wolverine lunging forward where you can see some of the pelvis and torso. Is there a simple breakdown you use? Uh, yeah, there kind of is. And so let me show you. Let me get the pencil out. Okay. So you want to think of your forms in as simple shapes as you possibly can. And so for my chest, let's just break this down to a very, very simple form. And that's going to be it. Here's the, the base. The arms would kind of come out here. And here would be like a center line, you know? And so my chest is, uh, it wouldn't be visible, or my neck hole wouldn't be visible because I'm kind of looking up at it. And so that's one angle. My chest would go here, give you an idea. But anyway, that's the really basic form. And so for me to turn it, what I need to do is, it's like turning a, a cylinder in space, but I'm going to angle it forward. So... Here's my shape. Now my neck is going to be here. My center line is going to be here. I've got an arm here, another arm here. And if I want to go totally, you're looking right at it. My neck's going to be coming right out of the middle. And my arms aren't going to be really visible there. And here's my center line. And so if I grow, if I go at this angle here, uh, I'm going to extend my head right out of the neck here. My chest is going to be here my uh, stomach and everything's going to be here and I've got them bent way over as you can see and this one the head would be my neck would come up here the head would be kind of here arms would be here and so it's it's just working with that really really simple shape and turning it I can even obviously uh, do this the opposite way so now I see more of the back and so here's my head hole here my center line bit of an arm here. And so now if I grow my head out, it's going to be here. Obviously, I want to tilt the head down because uh, I think if you, at that angle, you couldn't tilt it up. We don't have that kind of flexibility. And I'd have an arm here. And the other arm here. Now, one thing I have to say is, is the foreshortening as as this form here, which is a terrible form, I know, like it's, it's very simplified. As it turns, it also gets shorter. So this will be uh, a little shorter than this. This will be even shorter because you're looking at it head on. It's like 
So I've got my bottle here. You can see this is the length of it. As I turn it towards you, it actually gets shorter. And so if I were to draw a line on the paper behind it, so there's my lines. You can see as I turn it, obviously, it actually gets shorter. Uh, it just makes sense, right? And so you need to do that too. You don't want to turn it and leave it, you know, un unshortened. I think that's pretty clear, hopefully. Good to have a showdown down here. Dog and the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. No. I did uh, D and D with Allison today, and uh, we got a, a rundown on the cat drama. Um, unfortunately, our D and D didn't happen today, so we just hung out and talked, which was nice actually. Had a good time. Michael Norris has a super chat for five dollars. Dave. When do you know how to hold off on the rendering and let the negative space do the work? Uh, oh man, I, I feel like I'm maybe not always the best person to ask because not the best person to ask. I have gone through periods where I've it's seriously, really yeah, just over rendered uh, really badly, especially I, I want to say around 2009, I was really getting out of control. Um, so there, there are a few factors. You can get a lot more rendering in if you go smaller with it. So you go tiny little lines, you can do tons of it and it doesn't really interfere too much. But when you get really like larger rendering and larger sweeping lines, if you do too much of that, you'll, you'll really beat it to death. And unfortunately, I really think it's a, it's a bit of a, you have to do it. You have to experiment with it and dial it in yourself kind of over time. Yeah, I just, I don't have a formula for that. Um, yeah, I, I would say you want to, okay, if I have any advice at all on that one, and I wish it was a little better, but it would be that uh, you're rendering ideally, uh, and for the artists to do it the best. Um, it's what it is, you have black, you have white, and then you have graduations of shadow in between from dark to light. And your rendering represents that graduation from dark to light. That's really all it's, it's supposed to be. Uh, we get a little artsy and fancy with it, and it becomes a style, and I love that. But you kind of need to bear in mind that fundamental thing. So what you want to do is not put tons of line and rendering directly into your light. You want to fade up before that. I'm going to break some of those rules here probably because it's Beast. He's going to have hair, and it's going to be kind of detailed into the light as a result. But that's the general rule. So as I draw, I'm going to, I'm just roughing in really quickly some hair on his arm and I'm wrapping it, not his arm. If I was to cut it crossways, it would be here. And what I'm doing is kind of coming up at a bit of a 45 angle to angle it upwards. And this is something that uh, artists from uh, the sixties and fifties, Frank Rosetta did this beautifully, not quite, you know, with like full fur. And I'm sure he's done that too, but just arm hair even, and made it look amazing. It was a great inking technique, like a really subtle inking technique. And I really like that. So, and I totally forgot to do it here. See more white out in my future. Just enough to give me an idea of what I'm doing. All right, hand. This is where uh, sketching goes so much faster than like drawing a cover or something. And you know what's funny? A lot of times I don't know that when I draw a cover, it ends up better. You know, I just throw in my shapes, just kind of going based on what I already know. I will say you don't learn doing this. Like this is this is like the result of study. Uh, when you're learning, it's good to do this, but you really want to be studying. So you know, look at hands at that angle. Maybe get a uh, reference of your own hand or different artists, how they approach it, that kind of thing. That's how you really grow. And I'm not doing any of that, so it goes quicker, but and it's a little looser. I'm going to do the same thing on his leg here. I'm going to give him some hair coming up just like this. And again, I'm going to have to wipe that out. If this was pencil, uh, I would just kind of erase that line back out, but with ink, I'll just wipe it out. Bullet813 says, hey, Dave, just wanted to say thank you so much for all you do 
I wish we had this technology and people like you doing this back in the early 90s would have been so beneficial. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. Uh, and thank you very much uh, for, you know, your support and watching. I really appreciate it. But yeah, uh, I, I think it really dem demystifies a lot of things. Um, I, I learned so much from being in a studio and not only having people explain explicit to me, explicitly to me what I'm doing wrong, but just watching them work and seeing uh, how different techniques work when other artists uh, tried them. And you learn so fast doing that. It was such a huge thing for me. Um, a lot of the the image guys, and not just image guys, uh, I had Howard Jakin on uh, last week on Thursday. And he studied under uh, Gil Kane and Wally Wood and um, Neil Adams. And I mean, that is a pretty illustrious list of people to, to study under. Now, I think that they would have all been essentially in New York. And that's a big difference too, is the illustration business used to be really centered around New York. Now it's much more international, uh, which is great if you're not in New York, but it's uh, it's just so much uh, more spread out that there's not really the studio opportunities there used to be. So we have YouTube channels to try and get a lot of this stuff across. Henry Jeremy says, Meredith. Can you please ask Dave, what was the drawing that he got from Aaron Lepresky? He does not have to show it. Just curious. What was it of? Clayface? Thank you. I will show you guys next week, along with Tomek's picture, which we have. I don't know. You know what? Again, I got back from New York, and it has been a mad dash with uh, things that I've just been laid on. It's always this way, though. I give you my excuse this week. It'll be another one next week, and it's always the same excuse. But uh, I'd prefer to show you guys. It's a really, really nice picture. He did a beautiful job. So I will show you next week. I know right where this one is. It's been in my uh, my drawer. I've got a lot of original art. Um, and unfortunately, not a lot of it framed. So you know what? I can't remember which angle he lighted this from. Lit it. Lit it. <laughs> Lighted. Lighted. Uh, kind of directly downward. And I don't normally do that. Now, Jim Lee is more likely to light something downward because he's less shadowed. And when you light something directly, you, you can still, but anyway, I tend to be a little more heavily shadowed. So I kind of like casting shadow over elements. So I think I'm going to shadow it. I don't want to block that leg out. So I'm going to shadow it this way. All right. Here we go. Are you certain? Well, I'm, I'm doing it now. Here we go. I'm going to commit. Now I'm committed. There's no going back now. Tomic's head now. He's got a deadline to work on. All Hi, right. Tomic. <clears throat> Thanks for coming, Tomic. We'll see you next week. Eat some seaweed as a super chat for $4.99. I wonder why Beast doesn't have thumbs on his feet instead of toes. Rich Friend inked a Finch Batman on his Patreon recently. Buff oh, nice. boy. Awesome. Yeah, Rich is great. And then we have a super chat from Jim Klein for $20. I hope all is well. I'm a 29, 31 in, 29 to slash 31 into Inktober. Happy to be ahead. Dave, I really enjoy using a brush heavy style with little rendering. Any artist you'd recommend studying? Just pick up Dave Stevens, Rocketeer, Artist Ed, and I am enjoying it. Uh, oh, Rocketeer Artist Edition. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jim. First of all, I really appreciate Sorry, it. That was painful the way I read that. That <laughs> yeah. not only that painful. Yeah, usually that's me. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I personally think that you can't really do much better than Dave Stevens. Uh, so I think that's a great, great choice uh, as far as other artists go. Now, it, it really depends on the direction you're going in, but other artists like Dave Stevens are similar. Uh, I just got some T-shirts from him. William are Stout. the ones I don't like? Yeah, you know what? They're nice art, though, right? You just don't like it because it's... I don't think it's art that needs to be on a T-shirt. How about that? Okay, that's fine. But anyway, William Stout, who is, I think he's absolutely incredible. And I, I would really recommend, if you're not familiar, give that a give that a try. And, you know, early Frank Rosetta, I have a whole book of his comic drawing 
uh, like a huge hardcover book of it. And it's really amazing stuff. He was a comic artist before he was a painter for quite a while. He was a comic artist and then he uh, ghosted for a little, little Abner for, I think, eight years. Like he didn't really, <clears throat> you know, for the longest time I told myself that I'm still young. Frank Frazetta worked in comics for years before he painted. So even though my painting dream has not really happened, I have time. Well, I've gotten quite a bit older now. That excuse is kind of gone. You're out of time. I'm out of time. I think you can say you're a painter now. Uh, you know what? Okay, I'm just going to say I don't think you're a painter until people like specifically want you to paint something more than anything else. Like, I still think that if I uh, am doing, like, a cover for Marvel or DC, that they would prefer that I draw it. I do think that. I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'd want to be wrong, but. <clears throat> we have a super chat from Shaq Draws for $10. Shaq says, I finally get to catch you live. Love watching your videos. Your art style is one that I draw major inspiration from. Anyway, aloha from Hawaii. Pitch flock. Hawaii. Well, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. And it's good to have you here live, uh, even though you're in Hawaii and we're in fall here and it's kind of getting cold. <laughs> My little, hands is frozen this morning. Little jealous. That's awesome. Hawaii is definitely on my list of places I'd like to go. You know what's happening. The problem is Meredith. It's very difficult to get her to want to go anywhere that's that far because you have to be on that's the plane. True. And so I don't know that we'll ever she get to go. To Australia, I was done. Yeah, never again. Eh? Never again. It's too bad. Australia is great. I love it. It there. was. I loved it, but I'll never. I don't want to fly that long again. I'm what about New Zealand? Would you do that? Nope. New Sorry Zealand was amazing. Uh, no. So Supernova, which is the they're the convention. Okay, there are a couple of conventions in Australia, but they're a big one, and I've done a few of their shows. Actually, every time I've been to Australia, it's been with with Supernova. They used to have a partnership with a convention in uh, New Zealand, so I got to go. This was. You took your mama. I took my mom, yeah. This was just before we met, actually. Not long before. Um, so 2004. Maybe even 2005. Anyway, before we met. The pre-Meredith era. pre -Meredith. And you would have been thrilled to go, you know? Oh, I would have been. Time goes on, and you just... You, you, I'm old. Yeah, you get tired and tired got other traveling. things going on. Traveled enough. Yeah. Now I want to be home. It's got to be some kind of a reset button technology for your partner. You know, when they get sick of you, you can just hit reset and you have like a fresh start. Are you sick of me? <laughs> no, no, you I mean, you're. Reset your wife? No, I mean, you're sick of me. No, I'm not sick of you. No? Okay, I just good. Said I don't want to travel. Right. But yeah, if I could hit reset, you'd be all for it again. That's what I'm saying. See, that's what you are saying. You're saying you're sick of me. Oh, that's not what I was saying. There's no way for me to say that without totally getting in trouble. What you're saying. I wish I could hit reset <laughs> and you would want to travel. There has to be a reset button when you're sick of your spouse. No, see, I want a reset button for you. Then I can yes. tell all my lame jokes again. You'd be like, eh, you never laughed in the first place. Forget it. It's fine. You are never good That's true. I'm living my dream now, Dave. You are. Henry Jeremy says, Meredith is busy. Horses need constant attention. Yeah, Meredith. I think it's fair at 50 that I get to finally live my dream. Yep. I helped everybody else live their dreams. Oh, sorry, kitty. She's like, yeah, you hit me. Um, now I get to live mine. I think that's fair. You know what my dream is? To be married to me. To do all the things I want to do while you hang out and live to my paint. dream. Your dream is to paint. You've been living your and your dream is to draw comics. You've been living your dream your whole life. Like I still have not been to uh, <coughs> uh, Japan. Not properly. I had a layover there. Not even really. It was like get off one plane, go on the other. So. But Meredith does not want to go. It's too far. Talk to me when I'm 80. All right. Yeah, you know what? We'll, I'll never retire. No. What it does mean is I end up going to places myself. Like I, I uh, just agreed to go to Abu Dhabi in uh, December. And I'll be doing that one myself. Yep. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. They have a whole tour arranged. So 
They're, you're touring Abu Dhabi? Uh, look, when I say whole tour, I mean, you know, I'm not going to be there for a month. So this is where this gets a little tricky. I want to start. Did you say you're going to be there for a month? I, no, I said I'm not going to be. So I want to start getting my hair in. I'm going to start indicating. I don't want to do too much of it with this brush because I'm not good with it. But I also don't want to be here forever with a little tiny brush. I like, you know what I mean, the, the, the Tombos that I use every week. Um, the brushes, so, the brushy brushes. so I'm going to get some of it in this way, because if I just draw my muscles down through it, I have done that and then had to just white it out or erase it out, and that's fine, but uh, might as well do it right the first time. I'm going to leave it at that basically. And it's not much, but I don't want to get too carried away. I've done it before where I try and do too much with my big brush and I just end up with a mess. Dennis Kelly says, this is looking awesome, Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Very much appreciated. Eraser. Shek draws is another super chat for $10. You know those parody superheroes in cartoons like Mermaid Man or the Crimson Gin? You should draw those characters, but in your style, it would be cool and hilarious at the same time. That is a great idea. You know who I'd want to do? And thank you, by the way. I really appreciate Bob. it. Yeah, what's his name from SpongeBob? Did he say the one? I can't remember. The guy from SpongeBob, though. You know what I mean? I would do that one first. I do. It's not Mermaid Man. Mermaid Man is the other guy. It's, Merman? Uh, I, yeah, whatever. I know who you're talking about. You know what? I'm going to commit to that one right now. I've got the thing and I've got the SpongeBob guy and we're going to have four people watching because they're going to be like, what are you doing? And it'll still be worth it. Barnacle boy. Barnacle. There you go. Okay. That's who it is. <laughs> Thank you, Brian Woodruff. I would still draw him old though. It's not Barnacle Boy if you draw it. Look, you still have to draw a mold. <sighs> Pardon me for my yawn. So I want to get through this fairly quickly, mostly because Meredith, but also uh, I really want to focus on the hair. Mostly because Meredith. For you. Yeah. What I deal with. So as I go over his foot, I have to make some decisions about the cash shadow. And it's going to cover most of it if I do it right. And actually, I do want to do that. So, but I don't want to just, you know what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to light it first. Just this would be like local lighting, uh, no cash shadow from the knee. And then it, that will make it easier for me to kind of conform the, uh, the cash shadow to the detail that I have. That's what I'm thinking. Truggy dude has a super chat for a dollar, but I don't see the comment, Truggy. So just text something and I'll read whatever while you're super chatting. Oh, I'm so losing control of the anatomy on that foot. <laughs> You know what, though? Extreme maybe wants to. It's going to be in shadow. Says, Love the tick cartoon was great. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the tick. Yeah, it would be fun. I love drawing cartoony characters like that. And Ava wants to know if you've ever drawn the original Princess Leia. Uh, I have, actually. Uh, there is a, uh, a comic art collector that, that collects a lot of. Uh, well, it collects entirely Star Wars stuff. So now that I kind of have this and uh, it really fell apart, I can't draw a foot. Uh, now I get to just use my cast shadow. And because I drew all that in, I know exactly what I want to cover because <laughs> it didn't work. So that's kind of nice too. So I'm going to, whoops, I need to do that. So I'm going to cover as much as I can, kind of conform to it. I could have just done this in the first place, but you know, I figured I'd humil humiliate myself in front of you guys trying to draw the anatomy of a foot. Add that to the list of things I need to work on. I don't think anybody's surprised when you say you need to work on feet. Uh, yeah, I know. 
I'm an image artist. Also, you know, in my defense, image artists aside, and that is, you know, that's true. Uh, you really don't run into feet a whole lot drawing comics. No, you can cut them off. It, not even just cut them off. It's very rare that people run around with no shoes on. So I, I'm much more likely to have drawn a character with shoes. I think I'm going to leave this. I, I feel really strongly like I'm just going to have trouble you trying to use this brush. I'm going to leave it there, finish the lighting, blocking it in, and then we'll go back to it with the smaller, more controllable combo. This is where this can get a little difficult. So I'm lighting my arm kind of upside down. I can spin the paper. I'm not going to do that. I think I'll be okay. But there are times when I'm I'm drawing and uh, like an arm's upside down, it's not really the more comfortable way for, for me to draw. It's like a catch-22 a little bit because I don't draw, I don't light as well from an uplight. And when I turn something over, it's as if I'm uplighting it. Dave? Yes. The gourd box says, Dave Finch, he's got claws on one foot and people toenails on the other. Oh, fix that right away. Thank you. Dang it. Okay. There. Fixed, sort of. We'll get there. And here's another thing that's very, very challenging. Trying to get the anatomy of a back working at this angle. Yeah, some people do this really well. I fake it. I mean, I think to a certain extent, we all kind of fake it. And I do have to turn this. So my one uh, issue with drawing this angle, it's a very common angle, but I don't like having to draw backs. That's when things really start falling apart. <clears throat> Greg Ellis had a card has a super chat for $1.99. Hey, Dina, I'm working late, so can't hear. Looks sick. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Really appreciate it. And Smoking Monkey Films has a super chat for $1.99. His first super chat, but I don't see a question. <laughs> well, thank you. Anyway, I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Diet Milk has a super chat for $2. Y'all rule. We'll be rad to see you draw Rob Zombie. Oh, I'm a big fan, too. That would actually be very cool. That would be very, very cool. And then Truggy Dude has another super chat for $10. Dave, thank you so much for the help. So if I have it right, it seems like the darker shadows farthest away from the light get less rendering than the smaller shadows going toward the light. Well, they get broader. So like on the arm here, I've got, this is actually a vein. Maybe that's not the best example. Uh, I've got all my shadow kind of isolated. This shoulder is a good example. I've got a heavier shadow here. And then as I'm rounding toward the light, I'm really kind of keeping it open. Um, so that's really, now, um, when I render this, which is going to happen in just a minute, I'm going to render quite a bit here, and it'll be more open here because that's really what the light is. So unless I'm misunderstanding what you meant, I think it's a little different than how you said that. Henry Jeremick says, Meredith, you once suggested for the Halloween stream creature for the Black Lagoon. Are you still cool with that suggestion? Oh, man. Up to Dave. That is a great idea. Now, here's my concern. Well, of course, it was a great idea. It, obviously, it was clearly my idea. Oh, is it your idea? Yes. Okay, you are aware they'd be very reference heavy and very detail heavy. Like, you know what? Let's do it. No, no. I think I could find a way. It'd be actually really interesting to do it and try not to get too caught up in that and see if I could do it in more of a bit of a graphic way. Be interesting. All right. As long as you don't like. Keep yeah, no, we won't be here for hours. Well, we will, but out. not four hours. Two hours is acceptable. Two hours. Okay. Uh, a little more. Good enough, I think. Moving on. Moving right along. <clears throat> Allison McGlone has a super chat for $1.99. Can't 
Can you draw a universal horror monster next week? Um, so the universal ones are uh, Wolfman, uh, Dracula, uh, the Mummy. Um, already, it's not really working out. I like it. Things just get blunt. Hopefully, that's better. The Mummy. Um, who am I forgetting? Have I not done that? I don't think I have. You did Wolfman last year, it's, I think. Oh, yeah. You know what, Allison? I did. I did Wolfman. It's a Marvel Comics Wolfman, though. And it's actually, it's not Wolfman. It's Werewolf by Night. So, no, I haven't. And I actually, I did Marvel Comics Dracula. I did a short story years ago. A long time ago. And, well, Creature from the Black Lagoon is Universal Monster. Is he? As says Allison. Okay, so there you go. There you go. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Some guy in a nano suit. I just came to say Dave Finch is truly an artist and perfectly describes the word masterpiece in one drawing. Oh, man. I'm out. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. I will admit that I, I very much agree with uh, Howard Jakin when he said he sees it more as a craft. I don't know if he said that. We talked actually so much before the stream. So I, I'm not sure if he said that on the stream or before, but... Yeah, he sees it more as a craft. And I kind of can't disagree. Eric says, Dave can draw the Headless Horseman on Stevie. <laughs> uh, he's Steve, our little mini pony. He's, yeah, he's our little mini horse. And Russ Hicks says, I thought we agreed a few weeks ago that this year it was the Headless Horseman. Did we agree? Didn't you already do the Headless Horseman? No. You've never done the Headless Horseman? No. Are you sure about that? I feel like you've drawn the Headless Horseman. Okay, here's why I'm not going to do that. And You're I, gonna draw the creature from the black lagoon. Okay, the reason I don't want to do that, I'm gonna be straight with you guys. Uh, you want to draw horses? That's right. I'm happy, to, and I love drawing horses, but I need some reference. Like for me to sit here on the stream and do it, it would be a massive fail. It would look like who knows what, but not a horse. Nareth could try, probably draw a better horse. Um, well, let's not go that far, but you know. <laughs> hey. hey. Lou from Wardson has a super chat from four ninety nine. Looks great, Dave. Always enjoy the stream. Thanks for all the inspiration. Meredith, did you get your Finch Farm sign? I've not got it yet, but it's coming. It's they texted me last week or earlier this last late last week about it. So. Yeah, it should be really soon. Hopefully soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and go to his arm here. We have this kind of roughed in. And with this brush or well, this pen. Uh it gives you a bit of a thick to thin, so I can do a bit of a, uh, I'm, I'm going, yeah, thick to thin. So, and that's. What you're saying is, you're going to go thick into thin. Right. And I'm going thick here because it's a little thicker here, and then feathering it out this way first. And then I'll do the other way a little bit, but I want to kind of feather toward the light generally. And I don't want to lose like right here, I've got a bit of a hair coming through here. And so I didn't render all the way up to it just so I could get that little bit of a light in there. And I try to think in terms of negative space, even though it's, it's rendering, which you wouldn't really associate it with negative space. You know, it's generally more of a black and white, like a hard black and white technique. I try to think of that. So I'm not drawing all the lines through, I'm breaking up my rendering to get that effect. And so I'm just going to go and now the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm just drawing a bunch of hair and then I want to draw my anatomy through that. So it's not just completely flat, but first we're going to do the hair. And I always reserve the right to, uh, to, um, white out. You can do white it out. White it out. If in doubt, black it out. Is... I know it is. You know why it's better? because uh, then you don't have to draw it at all. Uh, I mean, it's a good rule, uh, you know, it can be very visually effective and then you can just avoid drawing it. So, and I, I wanna make the, his hair just a little bit shiny. So I'm going a little darker here too and rendering out into it. I'm gonna render over his hand a little bit too. Adversity Art has a super chat for $1.99. 
says, what about Michael Myers, Dave? Have I not done? Yeah, I haven't. Have no, I did uh, Jason. I don't know. They're all the same. Uh, you know, okay, truth be told, I'm not a massive fan of Halloween. And I don't know if I just kind of got into it too late, but. Halloween the franchise or Halloween the holiday? Uh, the franchise. Like they're, I, I, yeah, it's not really my kind of horror. Neither is, neither is Friday the 13th though. Which is why I really like uh, Freddy from um, um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Street. That's much more my kind of horror. A little supernatural, you know. I mean, they all are, I guess. But Okay, so now that I've kind of got that hair uh, drawn in there. Sorry for that. I'm going to start to finish some more of my anatomy. I'm going to have to keep going. And so I'm going to kind of break it into the... This just like this a little bit and then go in and finish it a little more honest father says i'm out sorry guys apple is messing up with me for use of my old phone ah uh, that's for it coming by honest father that's it we should just quit just quit that's yeah. it <laughs> we will miss you though thank Di you for being here diet milk has a super chat for two dollars bazooka joe finch style Drop bazooka joe from the gum. I, that wouldn't even be a departure, truthfully. Not really. No. Well, okay. Here's my concern about it. It would just look like a, a like you know, a, an army guy. Like all the character that's in there, I would drain away. I'm sure entirely, and it would just look like an army guy. That would be my big concern about it. So now I'm doing the same thing around here. Um. I'm going to kind of go on both sides of this. I don't have the greatest sensitivity with this right now. Sometimes I can get a really nice tip on these. It's not happening today. I'm going to start integrating the rendering of this into my hair. And uh, I want to make sure that my hair kind of sticks out a little bit. Of the profile. Smoking Monkey Films has a super chat for nine ninety nine. Have you wanted to re? Have you ever wanted to redesign a character from the ground up? For example, be started as a stumpy, barefooted humanoid, and then the eighties he turned into a furry blue creature. Um, you know what? I never liked him as a humanoid. I always liked him as the blue creature. I think everybody kind of feels that way. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I think so, though. And but have you ever wanted to redesign a character like that? No. When I first got to Marvel, I really did. Actually, I had all these ideas. I wanted to do all this different stuff and and do like my own version of everything. It really changed things. As I started drawing more, uh, it was just such a reminder of how much I, I loved everything and how like I'm a huge X Men fan. That's what got me into comics, and it means so much to me that my number one desire doing that stuff is to just do the stuff that I love, you know, so I don't want to mess with it. So generally, no, I'm very reluctant to do that. Can you see the puppy from where you're sitting? Yep, he's just laying there. Okay, I could hear rustling. Yeah, no, he's good. So I, I'm going to end up having to um, use this thing again. I'm not really getting the kind of detail that I really would like to be getting. So from here, a lot of what I'm going to do is is really the same as if he um, didn't have any hair on him, just like a regular kind of character. Jimmy Reyes Art has a super chat for $2. Jimmy wants to know, where can I get a copy of the Monday Night Draw sketchbook? How is it that Jimmy doesn't have a copy? Jimmy clearly did not support the Kickstarter. Well, Jimmy's on a budget. We all are. And that's, you know what? Like, I, I've got all kinds of stuff that I promote here, and I really do appreciate it. And the Super Chats, too. I very much appreciate that, too. But at the same time, it is not necessary. We're all starving artists here, you know? So, uh no, you need to, Maris got to buy some hay. Keep super chatting. <sighs> okay. I'm 
just kidding. Yeah, I, I sometimes okay. Look, from like a financial standpoint, I wonder like, what am I doing with the YouTube channel? It's crazy because it's a lot of work, and I don't make money from it. It's not really a business for me, but I never really wonder that long because I know why I do it. Uh, it's a connection with um, with other artists. Uh, being able to have other artists on the show and and talk to them about their work, I can't tell you how much I love doing that. And I couldn't do it. And also with all you guys and, uh, you know, seeing you guys at conventions too, it's, it's great to have, you know, a whole community. And I actually really do like doing the tutorials. So, yeah, it's kind of my hobby, you know, really like doing it. <clears throat> oh, it's time for the book of the week. Thank oh, no. you, Devon. Oh, no. You don't have one. I totally forgot. Shoot. Da -da 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 -da. There's no book of the week. Da -da 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 -da. Ain't no book of the week. Okay, you know what? You guys want me to go on the shelf and find something fast? First boat wins. First, boat wins. first person to say whether they want me to keep drawing or go find something fast wins. Eli says yes. Result okay. Says yes. All right. Says yes. Okay. Hold on. Yes, yes, yes. It's unanimous. Yes. He says Douglas R. Find something says Hulkster. Anything by Ron Tyner says some person. <laughs> it's very specific. One my ear says first book wins. Dennis Kelly wants you to pull out the toilet joke book. <laughs> Jordan Miller says, find something fast. Working on it. Working on it. Five. Meredith. Four. You're not helping. You're just going to make it worse. Three. Okay, here we go. I did help. See, look, I didn't make it worse. Now you have a book. <laughs> Maybe you helped. I did help. All right. This is. Works for kids in candy stores, too. I'm just telling you. This is Superman, Batman. I, I'm not good to my books. Uh, by uh, Ed McGinnis and Michael Turner and Jeff Loeb. But right now we're going to be focusing on Ed McGinnis, who is uh, one of my favorite artists and also an artist I really, really recommend that you uh, look at for reference. And I think you can see why just with this shot right here. His anatomy is incredible. His sense of movement is incredible. His design. And he's so clear. Like What he's done with Batman's cape, with Superman's cape, everything. This is really and he's got a cartoony style which i know a lot of you like i really like it it's not what i do i really like it uh <clears throat> so it excuse me it uh really breaks down what i do with a lot of little lines and a lot of a little detail into a very concise kind of package and really fully his own style too i mean we're very different artists <clears throat> But as you can see, and there's Mike Turner, uh, just an amazing artist. We need to do, I don't think I've done a Mike Turner book of the week. I don't think you have, but do you have any? Uh, yeah, I got a bunch. Come on. How could I not? So uh, things like this. This actually really reminds me of Kelly Jones a little bit. Kelly Jones does faces like this and, and things like this lit beautifully. It's really, really nice. And it's um, it's all just done with shadow. There's no, when I do these kinds of things, I put little lines all over the place and you can cover a lot of mistakes this way. With a style like this, like with what Ed's doing, like that figure right there, that for shortening is so, so good. Uh, you can't mask anything. This is pure skill to make this work. And you can do a style like this and make a lot of mistakes and sure, yeah, but he's not making those mistakes. And you can see like every arm that he has, look at the foreshortening in that. And this is very unusual that somebody does it this, this well. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, just in terms of, I mean, that's a great figure. It's tiny, but look at how great that is. This is a, an artist I really would recommend that you uh, consider no matter what your style is. Um, to look at for uh, a lot of things for for just doing you know figure sketches of just you know just the poses aside from his anatomy but also i mean that is such a great figure and the panel is so strong i really like a graphic look like this it's like every panel and this is another thing that i really respect about his work i mean that was a great shot 
is every single panel that he draws is well laid out and considered and he's taking time and effort with it. I mean, that is such a great figure. I'm just going to keep saying that. That's such a great figure. Uh, so many artists, there's only so much time in the day, you know? So you'll have some things that look really good and some things that are not quite as good. I don't think I've ever seen a, a drawing by Ed that isn't top quality. And so, I mean, as a result, here I am, you know, a lot of times I'll kind of flip through for like, oh, this shot and that shot. This book, I can just keep going. I mean, every shot is really, really incredible. How could I have not have done See, this is so good. I'm glad I forgot and just went to my shelf. For a long time, truthfully, I wasn't doing uh, books like this because I think so many of you are aware of Ed's work. And this is very mainstream. And I was doing stuff that's a little more off the beaten path. But um, this is very mainstream for a reason. And it's very cartoony, as you can see. But I don't care what your style is. You could use that and you could take what he has here and detail it in a slightly different way and have something very realistic because he is actually very realistic for how cartoony it is. It's, uh, it's got a lot of realism. His lighting is so spot on too. Uh, another thing I would say about Ed is you can really look at his lighting as a template for how to approach lighting because he just doesn't make the kinds of mistakes that some artists do where you'll have a light coming from one side, but then shadow will just be kind of all over the place. And it's very difficult to tell where it's lit. <clears throat> and yeah, uh, this is a thick book. It's it's pretty big. And I've only gone, gone through a tiny little bit and it's already really a gold mine of incredible work. I mean, look at that. That is a tough angle to draw on a uh, chest, by the way. If you haven't tried it, just on a figure, that's that's difficult. To get it to foreshorten, making the legs larger like that and then going up to a smaller body and making it really, really work uh, is, is not the easiest. So he does it beautifully. I think he has a very strong uh, Joe Mad influence, and you can see it in his work, but it's so his own uh, to such an extent. I actually, to be honest, don't ever really see any Joe Mad here at all. I think that it's in there and it is infor it's informed what he, he does, but uh, I just see Ed. He's one of the most individual um, uh, artists in the business that you can just pick up right away. So, yeah. Beautiful stuff. I'm going to flip ahead a little bit, so I'm not showing you the whole, just one section of the book. Let's do this for half an hour. Dave. What? Dave. All right, one more page. Have done, like, I have, I have given you. Oh, I love this stuff, though. It's been a little while since I've looked at this, too. I'm just a panel like that. It's great. I'll stop. All right. One other thing I'm going to say. Don't kill me, Meredith. I have a tendency, we all have a tendency, to draw kind of the same lighting on faces all the time. Uh, and you can see that Ed, while I'm sure he has his go-tos, here's essentially the same kind of face and lit. One is lit from the front, this one is lit from the back and completely effective and very clear and concise for both angles. He, he can light things from anywhere uh, really, really well, which I think is unusual for some of the more cartoony artists. It, lighting tends to not be a focus, so. Anyway, Ed McGinnis with Superman, Batman, Volume 1, uh, a great book written by uh, Jeff Loeb and also with Mike Turner art. So, you know, we're, I'm not going to focus on Mike Turner because Meredith will kill me, but I mean, come on, look at that. I really don't think you could do better than uh, picking this book up if you can find it. I'm sure you can. All right, there you go. Book of the week. All right. And before we go on, Kova's Lookout has a super chat for 499. Kova says, what a coincidence. I've been studying Ed McGinnis like crazy. My favorite artist. You should look at some of our Adams next. Uh, oh, we have actually. And I've got, I just got Arthur Adams' new sketchbook. And I've been like, oh, I really want to do it, but I've already done Arthur Adams. I should just do it anyway. I mean, can you ever have enough Arthur Adams? Probably not. I did get to show my Arthur Adams sketch that I'll have until I have to give it back. <laughs> so there's that. There's nothing worse, Meredith, than when you have, you owe somebody a sketch or they give you a book, something like that, where it falls apart like that. Uh, How long have you had that book for? Years. But I just couldn't find it. Where so it? Uh, it was uh, in a box. I've been going through some boxes trying to clear out our basement. 
And uh, I don't just throw the box away, believe it or not, Meredith. I've been going through them to make absolutely sure. And I saw that in a bag, in a box. And I thought, what is it? I thought, wait a minute, could it be? And it was. my stuff has gone in the bin? I haven't thrown any of your stuff out. Nothing. You only thrown your stuff? I don't need that kind of war. <laughs> Trust me. I don't need that kind of headache. So, no, I haven't been throwing your stuff away. Because I know I've got to go through and get those and stuff in the bin, too. But. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you guys had me do that. I think that was great. I started curving up this way, but his arm is coming in, like, away from us, his hands further away, than, so it needs to be this way. And I sometimes, when I'm not paying attention, I'll end up doing quite a bit of rendering the wrong way. And the cleanup on that, it's not fun. Happy don't like me. Having allergies right now. Yeah. I was petting the cat. And you're allergic? Well, then I touched my eye. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, it's fine to pet the cat, just don't touch your eye. I'm, I don't even think I'm remotely allergic to that cat anymore. And when I met Meredith, I had a serious, a serious cat allergy. It was tough. It's all about exposure. It is. I mean, you know, within reason, I guess. Nobody's saying to eat peanuts. Pardon? Did you just say eat peanuts? I said nobody is saying to eat peanuts. Like, if you're allergic, that's not when I say it's all about exposure, you know, within reason. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this is why I need a reset button for Meredith. Mm -hmm. you, need a, you do need a reset button. I can say all kinds of dumb stuff like that, and she won't be quite as sick of it. No, I'm just going to reset you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that means every dumb story I've ever had, you'll have to hear again, and I won't even know. I think that's a mistake. American Discord says, this is amazing. Love your version of Beast, Dave. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I'm going to have to go upstairs and get a nice cue. I can't carry this on my own. You can. All right. I think I have to go get a nice cue. Okay. We'll, we'll be here waiting. Back. So on his leg, I'm going to wrap this kind of, basically, I almost drew it right on the page. Um, like this and then back this way, which is kind of a line of beauty. And that's kind of my strategy for this. None where I drop that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I come down here to work and uh, I end up taking my socks off and then I take them up by bulk. <laughs> there you go. So I, I want... You know what? As much as I hate to do this, first of all, I want this hair to come off him a little bit more. I didn't want to do this with the big brush because I can end up with a real mess doing that. I'm going to give him, I'm just going to draw through and draw his, uh, some shadowing on his leg to give him some detail. And then I'll just erase it out with my whiteout. So I'm getting a little lost. I'll erase it out where it needs it. This is where I wish I was at McGinnis. He would have an incredibly clean strategy for this. It would look great. <clears throat> Another really important thing with this is I don't want to uh, start drawing hair in like a patch and then miss a patch and then draw another patch. It really needs to be an overall surface and an overall rounding uh, for it to work. And now we're going the when in doubt, black it out method because I kind of lost my like anatomy there. Thing that can go in the bin? What's that? That foosball table. Yes. Take a long time to 
space. Yeah, let's do that this week. That is, I like that idea a lot. Eric has been to my place and he could attest my basement. We we moved from a bigger house to this house because we, we moved out to the country and kind of downsized because, you know, property costs money. And, uh, and also, we're getting older. Our kids are going to be empty nesters in no time. We don't need a massive house. We're halfway there already. Yeah, we only got one home now. Yep. So uh, let me erase out here a little bit. Um, <coughs> Did you see the good day from Tasmania? Uh, no. Lewis Stadler, good day from Tasmania. Uh, yeah, well, you too. And thank you for being here. That's right Did you by. Say love you too. I said good day to you too, oh, and thank you for being here. Gosh. I don't know what's going on with me tonight. <laughs> I had to wind that back in my head and wait a minute. Is that what I said? I'm like, what did he just say? So a good portion of what I'm doing, like with that knee, I'm a little lost, truthfully. Man, I, I feel like I'm. I really need to go back and and do some anatomy study because, generally speaking, when I draw a knee. I, I do this method. So here's my upper leg. Here's my knee. And this is all going to be dark. And here's a muscle here, muscle here. And you do kind of this sort of thing, you know? And it makes it much easier to do that whole area. And I overuse that like crazy. And I can't do that here. And you can see this is where I'm paying for my own lack of understanding of basic anatomy that I should know by now after 30 years. So why we should always be learning. And a lot of times, like, I have a general idea. It's not like I'm totally clueless, but I just get a little lost with how to make it work because you're having to define things with uh, with line. And, um, yeah, I get a little lost. Help me out, Meredith. I'm starting to just cut down my drawing. Don't cut down your drawing. That's what happens when I'm left on my own devices. You're doing great. You're so awesome. Okay, that's better. Good, thanks. You did a great All right, list. stop. That was a joke. You didn't need to actually start. Oh, you, if you open yourself up to it, I will yeah. totally take it there. You know that. I like to believe, I will say this, that a lot of my favorite artists that are total geniuses, like Ed McGuinness, go through this too, where you're fighting with a picture and you just don't know exactly how that works. And you're like, oh, am I doing this right? You know? I don't know how to draw a foot from that angle. Revoke says the knee looks great, Dave. Ah, see, thank you. Feel better. Who else? Phil Finch said this is looking great. So, Joe Emick says, Dave, I love this piece. I'd love to see Nightcrawler. Have I not drawn Nightcrawler? Well, thank you. I keep talking about it. I don't think and I haven't done it. Crazy. Have you? I guess you've not. Drawn so many characters, I don't even know what you've drawn. In the I know it's, it's like what is this year three? Yeah, it's easy to lose year track. Four? Well, whatever it is, we're losing track. But um, I'm a huge fan of Excalibur. Alan Davis is Excalibur. This is kind of circa I want to say 1990 to. Dog, dog came right. in with his dog toy and just dropped it on a bunch of things. Phone's off the hook. Is that what? Okay. Yeah. Um. And we get to yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of that stuff. So, um, and his Nightcrawler is my favorite. Alan Davis, I think, really defined Nightcrawler. Really, uh, Nightcrawler was Alan Davis's version, right up until the movie happened, and uh, he became more of a, um, like a priest and more of a dark character, and lost his swashbuckling kind of sense of humor and. You know what? Uh, Got to have room to try different versions, but that was never my favorite, truthfully. Douglas R. has a super chat for $5. Douglas says, I love being able to draw along with you, Dave. I always feel like my pictures turn out so much better as a result. 
Can't wait to post this beast. Oh, awesome. Well, wow, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Post it on the Finch Flock and uh, Meredith. If if you have it ready for tomorrow, I'd really like to see it. She shows me stuff in the morning a lot of times, which is always nice. And the Gordox pub says, you've done Nightcrawler. Okay. <laughs> you have done Nightcrawler, says Jordan Seward. Oh, see? Okay, good. It's a great character. All right, what do we got left? Let me finish this piece. Your sister's on the stream. Really? I didn't say that into the microphone. Oh. I said that while I was blowing my nose. Hi, Leslie. Thank you for coming, Leslie. It's been a while. We haven't talked in ages. Leslie, I, I owe you a book. I know right where it is, too. Don't worry. I said I was going to read it and I would FedEx it right back. I read it and have not FedExed it. Speaking of books, I'm... just have to come for Christmas and then we can give it back to her. We'll wrap it. There you go. Is she coming? Ask. Okay. Wait, I just asked. Leslie, are you coming for Christmas? Alex Moreno wants to know, did you go to New York Comic Con this year? I did. I did. Yeah. I saw Dan Genovese there. I saw Extreme Maybe there. Um, I saw Atomic Art there. I saw a bunch of guys. Uh, and a bunch of people, actually, which is really nice, that I don't see live or that don't comment live, you know, one or the other, uh, that said they watch. And so for all of you guys, you know, that are watching – or are that are watching later and don't comment. Uh, thank you, really, and I, it means a lot to me uh, when I get a chance to uh, talk to you guys and you know uh, see you guys at, at shows. It's always great. When, you know what I'd like to do at some point, Meredith? I've been What's thinking about this a lot. What would you like to do at some point? At a convention, be it like New York or San Diego or whatever. And unfortunately, you know, not everybody can be at New York or San Diego. I, I know. You Right. Uh, I'd like to do like a, a get together, you know, maybe go to a restaurant, something like that. We haven't done that. And I think it would actually be really nice. Fun, fun. Now you're like, now Meredith has to go to a convention. Yeah. Just if I can hang out with all the peoples. There you go. See, you'd have a great time. We just won't tell Eric. It's not invited. Yeah, Eric's not invited. Not invited. No Eric Groves. <laughs> Your sister says no, not this year. <sighs> Carlos Nunez has a super chat for $5. Thanks again for the time and pick at New York Comic Con. Two years in a row. My wife was pregnant last year, and this year my one-year-old son joined us. Body to greet you. F. Finch Block for life. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ask her if we can go there. Navy Sharks has a super I'm not. Leslie, we're, maybe we can come in January again. Navy Sharks has a super chat for $20. Hey, Dave. Hey, Meredith. Hey there, Finch Flock. It would be a dream come true to spend Christmas with the Finches. LOL. Well. It's not as exciting as you think. It's not, especially for my sister. <laughs> I, I will say, because my sister's here, by the way, um, who I love very dearly. Uh, and she actually is a, the one that got me into comics. And she's the reason why I'm such a big fan of Excalibur and Nightcrawler and the X-Men because it was her comics that I was stealing. She used to get so upset about that. She said that would be fantastic. Okay, we're in. Yeah, it would be nice. I can't go an entire year without seeing her. Well, you have to be careful when you take guys to go to school, though. It's high school. Mm -hmm. It's not great school. Yeah. And well, I think we both can agree he can't afford to miss school. Right he can't. So. I agree. Well, we'll figure it out. Maybe over Christmas break. Dan Castelli has a super chat for dollar ninety nine. Hi guys, can I share a bad art joke? Uh oh. Okay. 
as long as it's a good taste. That anatomy is so jacked. It's actually jacked up enough that I'm going to have to do something about it. What anatomy? On his back. See, like I said, I can't draw backs like this. What I can do is fix it when it's really bad, though. I didn't need to get fixed. So I'm going to leave it there. I'll hit it with white out again in a minute. And... Uh, yeah, I, I picked a pose. And like I said, this is not a pose that I would ever normally do. And have you seen how many places I've struggled? Mm -hmm. And this is where, you know, you it, it really pays to actually try things a different way than you uh, normally would. So if I would have done this way I normally would, it would be so similar to so many drawings I've done on here. Uh, it would turn out, it would be easy for me to do, but I also would be, I'm learning right now, you know, or not. I think if I had more time, I'd, I'd be doing a little more study to make all this work a little better. I've got tons of reference, like anatomy, and, and you have to. And uh, that's what I do. Like if this was a cover, I would be going into some study right now to make sure that that works better. Because it's a sketch, it's going to be the best I can do without reference. And how sad is it that, like, I just don't ever do that angle? It's terrible. Well, the project you're working on doesn't really lend itself to that. Uh, you know, honestly, nothing I work on ever generally does. Well, it, I guess it would, something. But. Otaku Samurai has a super chat for 4 .99. Hello, David Meredith. Did you get to draw a Gambit commission at New York Comic Con? And what's the hardest commission or bust you've ever done? Um, the hardest I've ever done. That's a tough one. I've done a few, like offhand, trying to think. Um, uh, okay, I, I can't just point to one right now. What I can say is there are times at conventions I just get so tired. Um, I, I end up staying up all night because I've got a commission list. I hate to skip a commission if I've taken it. I, I really want to get it finished. And there are times that I just forget how to draw. Like right now, you know, with this figure, I'm running into trouble and you guys are all watching me run into trouble live. Uh, there are times I just forget how to draw. I, it just goes out the window. like I did. And when that starts happening, yeah, the wheels can come off fast. Whatever, uh, when it, that starts happening, whatever commission you're working on is the hardest commission you've ever drawn. Yes, and I have a gamut commission from New York. It is actually with uh, with Tomek's poster. So we need to find it. It's, they're all together. I brought it back, so I've got it. It was it was about a third of the way done, to be totally honest. I want to say, oh, yeah, done. It's not done. Uh, but it's coming. These are the kinds of things that stress me out. What's that? All these undone things. Uh, you know what? It is my life, Meredith. You know. Stresses me out, too. All right. I think this should be dry enough for me to be able to go over here. No, oh, it's still a little wet. Give it another minute. Well, I know my, what my uh, homework is. This week, looking for Tomek's poster and the Gambit commission. Uh, yeah, but I'm I want to um, do a little bit of study. I'm going to try some knees like that and see if I can kind of figure that out just a little bit better. Uh, and I want to work on backs a little bit from that angle. Something that I consciously avoid all the time. So next week I'll let you know how that goes. And yeah, I got no time. But you know what? If you don't prioritize getting better, you just get worse. So I'm going to do that this week. I think. You guys are watching me really struggle with this right now. And uh, I'm trying to teach this stuff. So I really should be. I'm getting frustrated right now. Why? Because I'm behind and I'm saying I'm going to do all this different stuff? Okay, so tell me why. Nothing. Just tell me. Uh, Dan Castella has a super chat for 49. I was a struggling artist, so I tried sculpture. I made over six figures last year. Wow. That is awesome. 
sculpture is really it's his own thing but if you can draw well uh it there's a lot of overlap so that makes a lot of sense to me and i think that that's amazing that's great Best name I can think of has a super chat for five dollars. I can hear the '90s X-Men theme in my head watching this. <laughs> do -do 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 -do. You, you don't know it. You never watched it, did you? No, I never watched it. I did not grow up with cable. If you recall, I grew up on Canadian television. Uh, yeah, Littlest Hobo. Beachcombers. Yep. We did get Little House in the Prairie. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> that's where the, that's where our culture decline started. I can sing that one. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Okay, that's this got to be tried by now. Nobody wants to get copyrighted. So I'm dabbing this because the last thing I want to do is pick it back up. Until it's totally dry, it could be a little sensitive. I hate that it takes a couple of layers, but I love that I can work on it afterwards without any trouble. There. So this needed a peek into my shoulder more. I know what I did wrong, if nothing else, whether I can actually make it work properly. What time is it? That would be great. 8.30. Got time to finish and to make sure that I fix at least some of my mistakes. The ice cube's just not working on the side. Normally it works right away. Dan Genovese says, I wish I could struggle that well. <laughs> well Russ Hicks thanks, said, oh, I'm not even talking, I'm not even talking microphone. Russ Hicks says, I'm thinking there's a knee tutorial coming. I've been waiting. A knee tutorial, yeah. Uh, that would definitely take a little bit of learning on my part. And I, I mean, I can draw knees. I can draw knees 99%, well, 90% of the time, whatever, you know. I've got my methods, like this knee. Hey, that was easy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I go into poses that I, I start getting a little bit more unsure and you know, this is where you get exposed. And this is why so many uh, artists, you get your first job and it, you think, oh, yeah, this is great. I got my first job. And artists all the time um, will just fold and just quit and not even finish under the pressure because it, it will expose your weaknesses really, really quickly having to follow a script. And uh, you can get away with a little bit of fudging it, but... If you have enough holes in, in what you're able to do. Dan Castelli is a super chat for 49. Dan says, OMG, I knew you wouldn't get it. I even told you it was a bad joke beforehand. See, it's a pun. Sculpted six figures, not earned six figures. Let me go back and read that. Joke. I don't get it. He sculpted six figures. Okay, explain it to me. Dan, I, don't I get was it. a struggling artist, so I tried sculpture. I made over six figures. Oh. Last year. Uh, it you, was a bad joke, Dan. And it was so <laughs> long past the point when you asked if you could say the bad joke, we all forgot about the fact you're going to tell us a bad joke. <laughs> and, you know, the problem is that, generally that speaking, with a wah, wah, wah. you can't I'm joke so, with me. I'm so sorry, Dan. I'm too literal. I don't get it. We are wa That was wasted on us. Yeah. I'm going to give him a little bit of hair here. I don't want to get too carried away. Just a, like an indication just along the outside here and kind of fade in just like this. So to give it hair. But what I don't want to do is draw hair over his whole body. Because not only would I be here forever, but it actually will start to just close it in and make it look bad. So largely, he's just a regular figure. All right, so I've got that cleaned up enough. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to turn it so I can kind of get a sense of the, that shoulder is going to come out into here. And then my arm's going to come back. And that's really what I should have done. Andrew Law Art has a super chat for $5. Showing us that you have struggles is a great lesson in itself. Appreciate the honesty. 
Uh, well, thank you. It's hard to be dishonest when you're struggling live, <laughs> but I appreciate it. I guess I'd be lying and say, this is my style. I've got a little whiteout. I didn't wait quite long enough. For whatever reason, my whiteout is taking a while to dry. So it's kind of got onto my my uh, pen a little bit. But basically, have it now. I'm going to close that. It, to me, it's, it's sticking out too much. That's like a vein there. But you have to be careful. You don't want a vein to look like it's, you know, six inches raised. I think... I didn't want to lose his hair. And so I kept this really open and I don't like it. So this is my when it when in doubt block it out time. And I think what I'm gonna do is use a little white out and re restate uh, his hair once I finish it. Figure drawing says struggle is failure, leaving the body. <laughs> I love that. You know what? I think that is a great quote. Because you can't avoid struggle. You know, you can just never try to push past your weaknesses. Uh, and it makes life easier, but you never get better. Okay. Oh, look at how big that came out. Dang it. This is going to be like hitting it with a fire hose, and then I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup, but. Dan Caselli has a super chat for 49. He says, fair point. I just like supporting the stream, but I don't have any questions. I thought you'd enjoy a dad joke. <laughs> we did. We I did. Mean, really, we did. In the end, it was actually more fun than if we had just yeah, gotten it. We were so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you got the they so dumb joke. All right. So now I'm going to, I'm basically done. I, I'm going to do a little bit of detail with my smaller, um, Oh, one. Done, done. I'm not done done because I have to finish that area on his hair and I need to wait for it to dry. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and use this. I can get a lot more tight detail with this. I don't like to go too far with it because I can get carried away, but I can clean things up a little bit and give them a little detail around the face. I feel like it's a real mistake to render too much in here. I know I've got a lot of stuff going on, but none of that is rendering. It's all just tiny little wrinkly detail. If I try to render that at that size, I would very quickly end up with a mess. Bannon has a super chat for $5. Can you explain how to study artists? I've been studying Mira, but haven't picked up much. Thanks. So ask him this, if, if you don't mind, if I just ask you a, a bit of a follow-up or, a, you know, a, whatever. Um, when you're studying, what are you doing? Can he just give you a description of, of how he's approaching it now? Well, just he can. He has the first time, right? You can look into the camera and ask him the question yourself. <laughs> I can't look into the camera. I don't have it on. Addy Bays Suarez has a super chat for $5. Would you ever consider making a video where you compile all the super chat tutorials into one? Also, what's your best way to study backgrounds? The problem with combining all the super chat tutorials into one is going back through all the streams to do that. Yes. And they're just there's just not time. It's a time factor. Yeah, yeah. As it is, I'm I'm very much kind of doing the doing these streams as I do them, and then like as soon as I finish this, I still have to work tonight. Uh, I've got a lot to do, so I just jump right into that, and then it just everything just keeps rolling into the next thing <laughs> and it yeah it's, it's a little tough um okay i'm just gonna say without asking then the best way to study another artist and i'm gonna do this with that get us really quickly we got time it's 8 40 and i'm waiting for that to dry anyway so let's just do this figure right here uh let's do it on the back okay so what i want to do is the first thing you need to know, and I'm sure you know this, but you need to have a like a, a decent, um, simplified 
uh, figure drawing method. So here's a chest. This is kind of the Loomis uh, method, basically. I mean, you'll find as you go along, you end up with uh, your own kind of version. But, you know, something like this. And that's kind of the level of detail you want. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and draw this figure. I'm going to start with the chest because the chest is your largest mass. And it's also where your head, your arms, and your legs are essentially limbs. So your, your chest and your pelvis are like the core of your body. Uh, something that might be helpful too is if you think of, of the uh, chest and pelvis as all one piece and think of it like a sack. So here's the top here. And here's the... Um, this would be the pelvis, and this would be like a potato, a potato sack. So here you go. Uh, but I'm not going to do that for this. This would be where my neck is coming out here. I've got an armhole here, and I'm uh, move my neck over just a little bit. My center line. Can I miss that? I can see the curve of his belt. It goes this way. That's something that's nice about these kind of costumes. You really get a really good sense of the curvature of the body. So there's my uh, um, chest and pelvis. I'm going to attach the head. You're doing this for the question that... Um, how do you study another artist? How do you study another artist? Okay, yes. so now I'm going to draw the hand because really trying to draw that arm through right now. Uh, a lot of times, actually, I draw the hand and then attach the arm to it. That's a very common thing. Uh, you can spend a little bit more time trying to make that hand a little more accurate than I'm making it here and i think that's very helpful for drawing hands but i'm just going to do it like that so i've got his shoulder here uh, this part of the arm here and i'm going to try and get a sense of of how that is kind of all fitting together just like this his other shoulder is going to be right here maybe a little further out and i did this actually at the start of the stream with the beast i was looking at jim lee Here's this leg. And uh, here's this leg. I I'm kind of going to start speeding up just a little bit. So uh, so that's basically going to be, be it. And then what I'm going to do is lighten this down. And now I want to try, not with lighting yet, but I want to try to get a little more accurate. So for this leg, he's got it coming out like this. And then it makes a nice, I like how he's got that attachment here. And I'm just, I'm copying what he has, but I'm doing it in a, a systematic way, the way that I would always draw. And uh, you'll pick up uh, other artists uh, kind of um, idiosyncrasies this way, much more than you might think. Here's how this one attaches, and I really like how he's done this. I don't do this, but I really like this, and I might try it after this. See how that knee really just sits in there? Really nice. Just works. And I'm going to go through the whole body and do this. And you know what? Uh, give me 10 of these, and uh, I'll be a bit of a different artist afterwards. And uh, this is how it's done. So there you go. That's how you study an artist. And if you're not doing it that way, I really recommend you kind of try that and do it with a ton of figures. You'll improve very, very quickly. So, and Addie Bay is wanting to know, well, how would you do that with backgrounds? Oh, with back. Well, okay. Do, so two different questions. One about how to start an artist and then how do you, what's the best way to study backgrounds? So I have a video on how to do that. Um, but... Uh, there are a couple of things with backgrounds that can be a little challenging. I don't even know if it was worth <laughs> waiting all that time just to do that, but it's there. Uh, it is what it is. So um, here, let me sign this and I'll, I'll tell you all about it. So to study backgrounds, okay, I recommend that you, if you're looking at a panel, let's find a panel by Ed again with a nice background. 
you know what? Let's look at this building right here. So these points all or these lines all converge at a point, and that point is going to be just about here. So this horizon line is just about here. So if you establish that and then uh, draw a grid of uh, vertical lines and then uh, lines coming from that point, that gives you everything you need. You lighten that down and then just copy it. Uh, and look at how he has, he's drawing negative space for that window. He's not drawing, uh, like there's no line at the top of that little sill there or this sill here or here. It's all just drawing the negative space, which I say all the time. Like that's really the way to approach it. And copying that window right there, you can use that window forever now. If you copy it, you'll remember it and it becomes part of your vocabulary and you'll stop drawing, you know, if you are drawing uh, very flat windows that don't have any dimension to them. And that's just from that one little window. And you can go through all kinds of stuff like that and just try some of those uh, detail elements. Another thing to consider is uh, perspective. So uh, a panel like this is going to be incredibly difficult. We're not even going to talk about that right now. Um, but for something that's more of a, a linear kind of a background, let's say you want to do a shot like this. You don't need to be drawing this hallway. You could use this perspective, and this is again a single one point, uh, simple one point perspective. The horizons right here. You could actually kind of recreate this on the page and draw just almost anything there. I could draw like you know the White House in the background here, and this is the lawn, and I could put trees here, and I could have a whole background in there using that perspective. And that actually is something that I did all the time when I was learning. I would go through artists that do some really interesting uh, perspective from you know some more extreme angles and find perspectives that I really liked. It didn't need to be the same background. Uh, and other times I would take essentially backgrounds from, from people. I would you know, alter the details and not put the buildings in exactly the same spot, but I would, you know, kind of copy it in a similar way that I do for figures. You know, if I'm doing that kind of a study, uh, I've done that a lot with Mike Wignola. A lot of artists do that really well. So yeah, it's, it's breaking down the perspective first, and then it's it's about the details and the way the details are approached. And that makes such a big difference. Uh, the perspective comes first, obviously. It's more foundational. But uh, just that window alone, if you took what you learned from that one little window and applied it to a lot of uh, architectural elements and technology elements, different things, that one concept can change your art significantly. So there you go. 848, Meredith. And we are done. Well done. Looks great, Dave. Thank you. I had so much fun with that. I struggled a little bit, but... Well, I think it's that is particularly helpful to show people that you don't put hair on the entire body. Right, but yeah. Like, I've got it longer here, here. Now, that's a choice, um, but it's generally a good choice to do it in those areas. It just works. If I was to draw hair all across his back, uh, I'd have a mess. And if you look at it, he looks like a hairy character. It, it, I, could, I could do a little bit more. We never do. Like I, I never run into a situation where I'm drawing hair over everything. Even if I was drawing like Wendigo, uh, where it's got, you know, it's a really, really hairy character. I wouldn't do much more than that because it really reads as hairy uh, just that way. So that's it. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you guys all have a, a great week. Uh, and we will see you guys uh, next week, next Monday, for our next Monday Night Draw. Uh, where will we be doing? What will we be doing? Is it thank Creature from the Black Lagoon. Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's coming up next week. All right. Have a good night, everybody.